Hello everyone, I'm Mike Levin of MikeLevinSEO.com and I just launched that same said website on a Raspberry Pi, which is a $35 computer. And I verified ownership of the website and Google Webmaster Tools so that it can start to be served in search results. But as you can see, it has a thumbnail image here which shows that it's using the default file with the skeleton CSS framework that I was using. And I have to fix that as soon as possible in order to prevent any Google duplicate content uh, issues. So I'm going to share a secret and it is a way to help you start to take advantage of Git if you're using it as I recommend. So I played around with a bunch of the files but I haven't done any more commits and I don't like any of the work that I did. So I want to roll back to my last commit and Git gives you a giant undo. It's not intuitive. You just need to know this. You can Google up the information but it's Git reset but not just that, it's hyphen hyphen uh, hard, which means uh, go back to the actual files. Don't just roll it back in the repository, but update the files on the drive from, and this is where you would give a version number or something, but head is the shortcut, capital H-E-A-D, for the last commit. And so I do that, and if I do an LS, all these files now are identical to the way they were at my last commit. Any work that I've done since then is completely lost. I could have kept it by doing another commit, but then I couldn't have used the shortcut head. I'd have to start using this other syntax for commits ago or for particular version numbers. Anyway, I want to do vim index.html. Now I can just simply arrow key down to see where I want to start pulling out the duplicate content. Well, first of all, your page title here your uh, delete word, delete word, delete word, delete word, uh, xx, i for insert, and Mike Levin SEO. Escape, colon, w for write, and it's a tiny thing, but you will see that change in the tab, because the tab shows the title tag. So whereas before this said your site name here or whatever it was, it now says Mike Levin SEO. Now I got to get rid of all the rest of this stuff. Now if I were to view source, it might give me a cleaner view than in Vim. And here it is. Delete everything in this dot container and get started on your own site. So dot container means class equals container. So they're telling me to delete all this, but I'm going to keep my headline so that there's some content there. And I'm going to take note what sort of tags things are held in to get the formatting. So you put things in a div that has uh, a class of, say, 16 space columns or one hyphen third of the column that it's in. So that's an interesting system. This is what Skeleton is doing. You're telling it how many columns, or alternatively, if it's nested inside of something, you can tell it how much of the column that it's inside it should occupy. Uh, H1 is, has a special class and some styling. H5 is just a naked tag, as is the H3. So this is plenty to go on to get started. Um, yeah, that's all I need to see. You don't need that view source anymore. I go over here and I will arrow key down to the line under my H1. So here's my H1 where the cursor is right now. I am going to do Shift V, which is uh, visually select the line in Vim nomenclature. And now I'll arrow key da down to just before the end div of the outer container. One hit on D for delete. I'll arrow key up to make sure I did what I actually wanted to do. I'll hit the escape key to get out of any insert mode I might be in. I know I'm not, but it's just Vim habit. 
and I'll do colon W for right. Now if I go back over here and I do a refresh, we have just the headline. That's exactly what I want. But now is where it gets interesting. We are right now, for all intents and purposes, just editing static .html files. But being on the Pygreen web framework, we have the Mako templates, which in simple terms, lets you mark up HTML with all sorts of special tags, including Python code. It is simulating the PHP easy web development environment in a Python environment. The same way JSP for Java server pages does that with Java. Here is the Welcome to Mako page, which tells you about the philosophy, tells you that Reddit is using this, and it's serving uh, over a billion page views per month. It's a pretty stable and ready for prime time technology. And it says, to get started, visit the documentation. Documentation, we'll go to basic usage. Now the basic usage page says, here's how to do it from scratch in Python. But if you're already using a web framework, like they mentioned pylons here, but Pygreen is one too, you can skip right to the next section on syntax. Okay, syntax. It starts to tell us how you can put things in that will get replaced in the HTML code. But we're interested in one particular baby step kind of thing you can do. One that in the olden days used to be called server-side includes. It added just a little bit of dynamic to otherwise static pages. Syntax for that is open pointy bracket, percent, include, and the name of a file. Could not be simpler. So I will copy that. I'll go over here. I'll arrow key down to uh, the line that has the H1. I'll hit O, which means insert a line and go into insert mode. I'll do an H2, and then I'll do a paste, and then I'll do a close H2. Now just, before I, just because I like before and afters, I'll do a save, escape, colon, W, enter. I'll go over here. I'll go back to the MikeLevinSEO.com page. I'll do a refresh. Guess what? Error, as you would expect, because foo.txt is not on the hard drive. Escape, colon, Q for quit. We're going to do, well, I'll show you a trick. This is not the way you have to do it. But the touch command creates a file by whatever name you give it, or if the file already exists, it updates its last modified uh, attributes. So I'm going to do foo.txt. Now there's a foo file on the hard drive. Error should be gone. Error is gone. But there's nothing in that text file, so there's nothing displaying on the page. So now we can vim foo.txt. Hit I to go into insert mode and type hello world. Escape colon W. Go back here. What do you think you're going to see? Hello world. Now if I view source, you think you're going you're to see that include tag? View page source. No. Everything is rendered out as static HTML. So if we find hello world, you're going to see it's inside of h2 tags. Now that line return there is probably because of the text file. I probably hit a hard return in there and I could get rid of that to make even cleaner code. But the point is you now have a powerful templating system where you can create menus and logos and global elements on your page so long as you use the same include file across all of your .html files. Very, very powerful and 
I guess I can't emphasize the point enough is that A, you're starting with, with what are normally static HTML files, and B, when you want to go further than that, you're using the Python language to go further, which will not box you into a very particular view of the world that tends to arise from starting with PHP or JavaScript. You have a much larger world at your disposal, and we're going to use our Raspberry Pi for many more things than merely hosting a lightweight website. Thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you soon. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.